Hello, and welcome to Big Data Technique and Tools. All right, so we just got through the traditional, uh, uh, technique, uh, I'm sorry, traditional data technique and tools. Uh, and so we kind of walk through that. Now we kind of go to the next piece of the slide. We do kind of the same thing we did in the last video. We kind of talk about what it takes to get big data ready, uh, where this data is coming from, and some of the tools that are used there, all right? So once again, looking at our, uh, our, our chart here, uh, we're now dealing with big data at this point in time. And once again, getting it ready to get this raw data ready for processing in the data science world. Uh, for the most part, we're going to be sitting down here, and which, what you'll find out is very quickly here, this is going to probably be a little bit shorter video, that much of the same techniques are used from traditional data that is in big data. We'll just kind of talk about a few new things as we go into it. Uh, once again, you'll start seeing some of the tools here, and you see some of them have changed. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, Java has been introduced. Scala has been introduced. Uh, Hadoop has been introduced, and so on. All right? Okay, so as I just mentioned, uh, when it comes to pre-processing data to ensure data is, is cleansed, complete, and correct, for the most part, the concepts are still all the same. Uh, somebody, uh, the big data, uh, you know, developers and analysts and so on, are going to go into that and make sure the data is correct and, and, and right and complete. I don't need to show you slides on what that means anymore. Hopefully, you got that from the traditional method. Same concept. Uh, it, you know, but it's on a much larger basis, obviously, and probably even on a more complex basis because some of the data we're going to be using is out of our control, <clears throat> meaning it's not internal data to our company. It could be external in regards to social media type data that we pull in and we analyze to see who's hitting our sites or what they're saying about us or what they're trying to buy and so on and so on. Uh, it could be, you know, financial data coming from the stock market, the ups and downs of the stock in, in certain areas based upon the economy and the day and, and the things that are happening in the world and so on. Uh, that all I play a part in dealing with, you know, data analysis and so on, trying to understand how well their company does based upon uh, what's going on in the world. All right. But this data, you know, coming together in this big, big data environment that could be incorporating a lot of our traditional data along with a lot of external data, we need to make sure once again that it's all ready for analysis. If we're going to analyze it, it needs to be cleansed, complete, and correct, but on a much larger scale and a more complex scale. Hope that makes sense. Uh, so pretty much what I just kind of said there. So in doing so, there's a combination of data sets. And so, but for, for analysis to be represented and correct, it must be complete and correct. This requires more work and possibly better and more complex tools. And as you just saw a second ago, when I showed you that, there were new tools involved uh, that, that play a big part of big data and, and helping us get ready for that and looking at different data, uh, big data type of scenarios and so on. One thing also when we talk about big data is, is that we, you know, there's this whole concept of data mining. It's another term that's kind of thrown in here. We haven't really talked about it too much. Uh, there was actually two terms, if you paid attention, <laughs> that I kind of thrown in here, data warehousing and data mining. In a lot of cases, when we look at big data, uh, it, a data warehouse is a combination of many traditional data models thrown into what's called a huge data warehouse. It's not a you know, a student database. It's a data warehouse of all different types of data. It relates very much to big data. And if you actually go out and look at the concepts of data warehousing, uh, you'll see that it really relates hand in hand in that. I will provide you some resources and more definitions on data warehousing under, uh, under resources for this week. I recommend you take a look at those. Data mining is another term. Uh, we may have spoke about this a little bit earlier on in some of our earlier videos where Traditionally, it's not the term it's used as much anymore, but it's still, it really is. I mean, it's, uh, there's a whole idea of taking that data warehouse and mining and trying to find the stuff out of it. And that's really what BI and data analysis is all doing. But then there's also the whole data mining concept of really text data mining, where we actually get into reports maybe that have a lot of good information or data in there that we need to mind and take out and make it more structured so we can use it. That does sound complex, right? But it's being done. And so 
when we don't have our traditional columns and rows and data and fields and so on, we might have this big textural type thing. Maybe it comes from the internet. Uh, maybe it's a, a PDF or something that professionals will take and, and really get into it and mine it to see if there's any potential data there that could be useful uh, for their uh, uh, regards for their analysis or analytics. Kind of wild, right? Like I said, this course is, doesn't talk about how they do all that. This course is all about the high level of what goes on. And so uh, hopefully that's what you're getting from here. Uh, sometimes I wonder if I'm stopping too early and you might be asking the questions, well, how did they do it? Well, how they do it is very complex and it's basically a course in itself. And once again, if you're willing to look at that, it, based upon the information I gave you and pertain to who does this type of work, okay, uh, you may want to look into those fields and look at the education required to be able to do such a thing. So most of the data, like I said before, uh, comes from the company's traditional relational databases, non-relational databases, and Excel spreadsheets. However, some of the data, most of the data when it comes to big data, not only comes from there, but a lot of it comes from the external pieces. Social media, financial stock history, company reports, industry reports, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Big data is just that. It's huge. It's a lot of data coming together that professionals look at to see if there's information there that could basically help our company understand where they are today and where they're going into the future. So it's a very complex world, and uh, it's an exciting world. You know, it's one that we're seeing in IT where it's, it's really the next steps in providing really great information that may have not been there 10 years ago that's really helping companies differentiate themselves from their competition. So what are some of the tools? Well, uh, pretty much some of the same ones we had before. Python, R, SQL, and MATLAB. Uh, they all play a big part of the programming type stuff that we've had before. Uh, very much the same thing. Uh, Java is in this one also. I think I mentioned before, I need to put that on this list. Um, uh, Java is one, a programming language that's probably been introduced. You will see, and you probably have seen when we look at that chart that I've been re referencing that, you know, many of the languages we teach here at Cincinnati State are all part of this, from Java to Python, to SQL, to C, to C++, and so on. All relevant languages that's big in the data science world. So it's good to get to know them, right? Uh, there are certain ones we don't cover, uh, but nonetheless, uh, once again, you know one programming language, you can kind of start building it up. And again, I go recommend looking uh, at some information around R and MATLAB if this is a profession that interests you. All right, uh, so in this other thing, we have HeyDoop, but the, the third party, the other thing, I'm sorry, third party software is out there, HeyDoop, the Apache HBase. These are platforms uh, that uh, allow you to go in and really cleanse the data, look at the data, break apart the data, data mine the data, and so on. Very complex uh, and, and, and wonderful pieces of software and platforms to help you do this. Both of them are basically from Apache. Uh, and once again, I gave you a ton of information out there, resources to go read a little bit more about them and try to understand them a little bit more and what they do and how they go about their jobs. All right? But these are more platforms to help us see the data and break it apart and, and, and get it ready once again for analysis and so on. Okay, told you this would be a little bit shorter video, uh, but now we got the data. The whole idea is now, you know, we look at big data, we look at traditional data, and we got it all. We got it all ready, and that's what the people that we spoke about, the professions do in, in this regards to data science, is get the data ready for analysis, okay? Be it BI, which is more of the past, or be it... Uh, predictive analysis for traditional methods of machine learning and AI and so on, which is all about predicting the future. But this is what they're going to analyze. This is what we're going to utilize for our statistical methods and so on, is the big data and traditional data from our companies. And again, the, 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 the amount of work, I guess I should say, or the professions that do this are you know, educated and ready to go and really understand what they're doing. It's an interesting field. Uh, like I mentioned in my previous video, I've talked to many people in the field in preparing this course for you. And uh, many of them have, are traditional programmers or come from traditional programming, and they've gotten big into this type of field of data science and so on. So it's kind of fun to think about where everything can branch out. 
But I also still believe, as a person who's been in this field for quite a while, that having the basis of a programming foundation allows you to solve many, many, many problems, including everything around the data science uh, topic, okay? With that, we'll move on to business intelligence next.